Srilanka has a free and universal health care system. It scores higher than the regional average in health care having a high life expectancy and a lower maternal and infant death rate than the other countries. It is known for having one of the world's earliest known health care system and has its own indigenous medicine system. Sri Lanka is an island located in the Indian Ocean. Despite the rich diversity of medical practices in Sri Lanka, Western, Ayurveda, Unani, Siddha and homeopathic medicine, the public health care sector comprises under the Western and Ayurvedic systems. The private sector consists of practitioners in all types of medicine, allowing people to seek the medical care of their choice. The long-term aim of any health system is the sustainable health and well-being of population its services, thus contributing to an economy and social development of the society. Such a health system must be responsive to people's needs and must be coordinated to ensure access to comprehensive, high-quality, equitable, cost-effective and sustainable health services. The purpose of this review was to examine the health status of Sri Lankans and the trends in healthcare provision in Sri Lanka. The Sinhalese medical tradition records back to prehistoric era. Besides a number of medical discoveries that are only now being acknowledged by Western medicine, the ancient Sinhalese are believed to be responsible for introducing the concept of hospital to the world. According to the Mahavansa, the ancient chronicle of Sinhalese royalty, the King Pandubabe had lying in homes and hospitals built in various parts of the country after having fortified his capital at Anradhapura in the 4th century before Christ. Ruins of the hospital in Mihintale, which was built by King Sena II that dates back to the 9th century, has been discovered and it is considered as one of the world's oldest hospitals. Several ancient Sri Lankan kings are known to be practitioners of medicine. King Buddhadasa was said to be adept in general medicine, surgery, midwifery, and veterinary medicine and he is known for the surgical operation on an outcast woman in order to deliver her child and the surgical removal of her lump in the belly of her snake. Swartha Sangraha, a comprehensive medical treatise in Sanskrit, it also attributed to King Buddhadasa. King Agabodhi Seven is known for his medical research and according to the Kulavamsa, the king studied the medicinal plant over the entire island of Sri Lanka to ascertain whether they were wholesome or harmful to the sick. Excavation of the ruins of ancient hospitals have uncovered several surgical instruments like forceps, scalpels, and scissors as well as spoons that are believed to be used to mix or administer medicine. The hospitals in ancient Sri Lanka had toilets and baths that were attached to the living quarters. One of the most interesting artifacts is the medicine through known as the Behetaruan Sinharis. According to the Urugota, the first of these sarcophagus like stone receptacles was found in the Trupa Rama monastery at Amradapura. These structures intrigued archaeologists for quite some time till it was realized that they were found in the vicinity of ancient hospitals. It was then suggested that these structures were items of equipment used in hospitals. Evidence from all Ayurveda texts lent indirect support to this theory, Uragada notes. Uragada also mentioned that these medicine throws were used in the form of treatment known as immersion therapy, which was used to manage skin conditions and diseases 
such as rheumatism and hemorrhoids. Infusions of medical herbs, milk, ghee, oils, and vinegar were some of the liquid used in immersion therapy. Ripley absorbed into the affected person's skin by soaking in the through much like soaking in the bathtub. The trolls discovered that the ancient hospital sites in Anuradhapura, Polonnaruwa, Mehikale, and Madhiri are believed to date back to the 9th century. However, Urabuda notes that ancient Pali Buddhist canons which date back to the 5th century also make mention of immersion therapy. The second method is acupuncture. A history of medicine in Sri Lanka also referred to acupuncture, a treatment which was historically used by Ayurvedic physicians, especially those who were in the south of the country. This treatment was quite dissimilar to Chinese acupuncture. It called for piercing or vulturizing of certain points of the human body. It is believed that his practice may have been an indirect influence of Chinese medicine through the spread of Mahayana Buddhism in South and East Asia. Uragoda mentioned that the basic tools used for this procedure consisted of a tapering metal rod which was used for puncturing and another with the blunt end which was used to pulverize the skin. These tools were locally manufactured and several which date back to the 17th century hour display at the Fog Museum in Nongali. The third method is snake foot. Until the Portuguese migrants arrived in the 16th century, Sri Lanka had no contact with Western medicine. Certain Portuguese medical techniques, which were influenced by the most of Spain, were introduced after areas along to the coastline were colonized. One such technique was used to snake wood as protection against snake bites. In the 16th century, in order that the mongoose would rub itself against the root of snake wood, plant before it fought with its natural rival of cobra. The fourth method is Bezoar stone. A Bezoar stone is a concretion found in the instrument of male gods. A history of medicine in Sri Lanka mentioned that the medicinal properties of a Bezoar stone was first identified by the Arabs. In turn, the Portuguese began to use bezoar stones for a variety of illnesses and health conditions. Wealthy persons took it in rose water twice a year in order to preserve their youth. It was also used for quickly heat, leprosy, and malaria. As a local application, it was employed in the extraction of poison in ulcers and for the bites of mad dogs and other animals, Uroguda writes. At the time the Portuguese were in control of coastline, the island of Del of the coast of Japna became famous for the use of such stones to a point where even ships from Bengal would stop over at the island to collect them. In Sri Lanka, life cycle has increased and the rate of death has declined. The impact of new technology is very important for that. In present Sri Lanka, healthcare system has developed more than past surgeries and treatment that cannot be done in the past are currently being carried out in Sri Lanka. Those are the thyroid surgeries, hair transplantations, hand surgery, head and neck surgery, neurosurgery, heart surgery, and other general surgeries. Also new tests are being carried out like CT scan, ultrasound, ECG, 
EEG, MRI, endoscopy, etc. The CT scanner has done a great deal of work to identify the dengue hemorrhagic fever cases in Sri Lanka. This has reduced dengue death rates. The government of Sri Lanka has introduced a special ambulance service system. Anyone can take this benefit by dialing 1919 by any telecommunication network in Sri Lanka. As well as there are more available internet facility systems to channeling consultant doctors like e channeling, meet your doctor and doc.lk. Also, Sri Lankan government is introducing a competitive diagnostic system. These are the things of Sri Lankan government has used new technologies for development their healthcare system. Since the inception of the Health Informatics Society of Sri Lanka in 1998, one of the major dreams has been to enable the health care system to function more effectively with the added contribution made by information and communication technology. In September 2010, in accordance with the vision of the government on healthcare information technology, Health Informatics Society of Sri Lanka laid the foundation for a new era. IT enabled healthcare in Sri Lanka by successfully conducting eHealth Sri Lanka 2010 with the participation of all stakeholders in healthcare in Sri Lanka. Under the guidance of the current president of Health Informatics Society of Sri Lanka, Dr. Vajira H.W. Disanayaka, a two-day international conference was held in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, the Information and Communication Technology Agency, and the Postgraduate Institute of Medicine of the University of Colombo at Water Sage on September 15 and 16 in 2010. The event was graced by the presence of the Minister of Health. Honorable Maitri Pala Sirisena, Ministry of Parliament as the Chief Guest and the Minister of Technology and Research, Honorable Professor Tissa Vitarana, Ministry of Parliament as the Guest of Honor. The main objective of the conference was to provide a common platform for all those carrying out various IT-based projects in the healthcare sector of Sri Lanka to present their work and exchange ideas. An interesting two-day program was held under the theme IT Enabled Healthcare. The program included plenary lectures, symposia and oral as well as poster presentation under seven main themes. First one, e-health policy. Second one, IT for health administration. Third one, e-health in private sector. Fourth one, clinical informatics. Fifth one, public health informatics. Sixth one, IT for medical education. Seventh one, special topics. Dialog Intel and GE Healthcare were the main sponsors of eHealth Sri Lanka in 2010. The Sri Lanka Rupuahani Corporation supported it as the electronic media partner. The print media partners were the Sunday Observer and the Daily News. We were happy to see that dreams of those who founded Health Informatics Society Sri Lanka a decade ago will slowly become a reality today. The contribution made by eHealth Sri Lanka in 2010 to accelerate that process was not lost on those who participate in the conference. eHealth Sri Lanka in 2010 was definitely a turning point in the history of the Sri Lankan healthcare system.